Hello everyone. So today we will be having the probably last lecture of the breast series, the carcinoma breast. So uh, let us start now. You must be familiar with the flow chart. When there is a breast mass, you do clinical assessment, ultrasonography or mammography, and FNAC. And depending on the finding, like benign, suspicious, or malignant, you device your treatment protocol so in benign you do either excision or follow up in malignant you do surgery in suspicious obviously you proceed further with core biopsy or external biopsy and after the result you proceed with the same thing so let us learn more about carcinoma breast before that you should be aware of relative risk of invasive breast carcinoma based on pathological examination so this is the table showing you the relative risk. So there is a thing where insufficient data to assign a risk is there. Examples in this category are solitary papilloma of lactiferous sinus, radial scar lesion. So there is one more term which is moderately increased risk that is five times and this falls the atypical hyperplasia which is ductal or lobular. So it is having five times the risk of relative risk of invasive breast, uh, breast carcinoma. There is again slight risk that is 1.5 to 2 times. In this hyperplasia, moderate or florid, solid or papillary is the example, and papilloma with fibrovascular core is another example. So the important ones are these ones in which there is no increased risk, and you can we asked MCQs, adenosis, clerosing or fluoride do not have a risk which is increased, apocrine metaplasia, cyst which can be macro or micro, ductectasia, fibroadenoma, fibrosis, hyperplasia, mastitis, peridectal mastitis, femus metaplasia are not having increased risk. So this table is very important and it is from billion love so you should remember this table. Again incidence and clinical features you have read in the previous lectures some of the important points to remember in this are the carcinoma of breast is closely related to quadrant in upper outer quadrant it is 60 percent in upper inner quadrant it is 12 percent in lower outer quadrant it is 10 percent in lower inner it is 6 percent and the central it is 12 percent it is the percentage of carcinoma which is there in relation to quadrant of the breast. Now there is a pragmatic classification of breast cancer in Bailey and Love and this table is also very important. In this there are groups. So very high risk. If you start from here, very low risk group, low risk, high risk, locally advanced and metastatic. In this 5 year survival is like this, 5 year survival. For very low risk is 90%, 5 year survival for low risk is 70 to 90%, in high risk less than 70%, in locally advanced it is 30% and in metastatic it is not given. So examples of very low risk are screen detected DCIS, tubular or special types. Low risk are node negative favorable histology, high risk is node positive unfavorable histology and the locally advanced is large primary or inflammatory. The treatment of very low risk is local excision, low risk primary breast cancer is loco regional with or without systemic chemotherapy. In high risk, loco regional with systemic therapy. In locally advanced, primary systemic and in metastatic, it is primary systemic. Now, this is also again important table. In fact, two tables 53.4 and 53.3. In so algorithm for management of preparable breast cancer, achieve local control, this is very important. Appropriate surgery is again important and thus wide local excision with clear margin and radiotherapy or mastectomy with radiotherapy can be done. And this offer re reconstruction immediate or delay that can be the option combined with axillary procedure can also be done. Await final pathology and receptor measurement before uh, committing to the patient, use risk assessment tool stays if appropriate. 
Now treat the systemic disease. This is the very important thing which is to be done. Offer chemotherapy if prognostic factor poor. Include Herceptin if Herceptin positive. Radiotherapy as detected, I mean decided above, obviously uh, I'll explain you later. Hormone therapy if estrogen receptor or progesterone receptor positive. Now treatment for early breast cancer is the aim of the treatment is cure likely in some patient but late recurrence is possible even in early stages. Control of local disease, conservation of local form and function, prevention or delay of the occurrence of distal metastasis. Now the types of carcinoma you must be aware carcinoma in C2 examples are ductal carcinoma in C2 and lobular carcinoma in C2, invasive carcinoma, paget disease of the nipple, invasive ductal carcinoma, invasive lobular carcinoma and the rare cancers. Examples of DCIS are comedo carcinoma, intermediate type and non comedo carcinoma. In non comedo it can be solid, it can be cabriform, it can be papillary. Invasive ductal carcinoma, examples are adenocarcinoma with productive fibrosis, medullary carcinoma, Mucinous at its colloid carcinoma, papillary carcinoma. Rare cancers include adenoid cystic and squamous cell carcinoma. Now, the difference between LCIS and DCIS age. LCIS 44 to 47, DCIS is 40, 54 to 58. This table is from the book R. Raj Mahendran, which is giving a, a list or some clinical cases which are very important and these are helpful to you people. So you can go through the book also. Incidence 2 to 5%, 5 to 10% DCIS, clinical signs none, mass pain discharge and DCIS can be there, mammographic signs none, in this calcification can be seen, multicentricity in 60 to 90% in LCIS and uh, LCIS and in DCIS it is 40 to 80%, bilaterality is 50 to 70%, 10 to 20%, invasive type 23 to 35 25 to 70 percent histology ductal ductal thus the subsequent invasive carcinoma that develops is 60 percent ductal origin not lobular type so this is very important point you should remember this in lcis now there is bloom and richardson grading or nottingham system of grading and this grading of ca breast is based on number of mitosis nuclear pleomorphism and tubule formation so let us see indexes 0.2 multiplied size in centimeter plus stage of axillary node plus grade of the tumor. So stage of the nodes, 1 is no node, 2 is 1 to 3 nodes, 3 or 4 or more nodes positive. So 3 is 4 or more nodes positive. So grades 1 to 3. Prognostic groups excellent is NPI less than 2.4, good is less than 3.4, moderate 4.4, moderate 2, 5.4 and poor is when the NPI is more than 5.4. So the treatment is very important in this. It is multi-modality treatment which involves surgery, chemotherapy, hormone therapy and radiotherapy. So surgeries, we should be aware of it. Modified radical mastectomy, radical mastectomy, quartz therapy, simple mastectomy, toilet mastectomy, breast conservation surgery. So simple mastectomy is what? It is removal of all the breast tissue, nipple, areola complex and the skin. In this prophylactic simple mastectomy can be done in BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations. What is toilet mastectomy? You should be aware it is nothing but simple mastectomy. It is done in the cases of ulcerated carcinoma breast. In extended simple mastectomy, removal of all breast tissue, nipple, areola complex, skin plus level 1 lymph nodes is done. There is one thing which you know, modified radical mastectomy. In this removal of all breast tissue, nipple, areola complex, skin, level 1 and level 2 lymph nodes are excised. There is petis modification of radical mastectomy in this. We divide and remove the pectoralis minor and this level 1, 2 and 3 nodes can be removed. The most common perform surgery then comes ocean clause modification. In this what we do is we retract the pectoralis minor superior medially and this allow us to remove level 1 and level 2 lymph nodes. There is one thing one more modification scalenol modification in this the tendon is divided in its insertion at coracoid process and then again we put it back. By this method it is helping us to remove level 1, 2 and 3 
lymph nodes. Structures which are preserved in MRM, it's very important questions in exam, axillary vessels, Bell's nerve, cephalic vein, nerve to latissimus dorsi, pectoralis major. So radical mastectomy is one thing you should be knowing. The classical example is L state radical mastectomy in this removal of breast tissue is done with nipple and areola complex and level 1, 2 and 3 nodes are removed along with pectoralis major. Pectoralis minor, serratus anterior part, latissimus dorsi, subscapularis, external oblique, few fibers and upper part of rectus abdominis. So, structures preserved in radical mastectomy are then vessels, axillary, bell's nerve, cephalic vein. Disadvantage is that it is a mutilating surgery. No bed for reconstruction is there and lymphedema of arm more common. Poor cosmetic results, obviously, and extended radical mastectomies are urban type in which health kit plus removal of internal memory nodes. In Dallin, a virgin type. It is urban plus supraclavicular nodes removed. Now, breast conservation surgery is nowadays preferred over mastectomy. It involves removal of the tumor with wide margins with adjuvant radiotherapy with or without assessment of axillary lymph node stages. DCIS stage 2 or 1 carcinoma breast are the standard treatment. Indications, solitary cancer, possible to excise the tumor with tumor-free margins without disrupting the breast carcinoma, I mean breast cosmetically, no contraindication to radiotherapy are the indications for BCS. Well-motivated patient is a good example for indication. Contraindications are presence of two or more primary tumors in separate breast areas, diffuse malignant appearing calcification, history of prior radiation to the breast, Persistent positive margins after two attempts, pregnancy, first and second trimester can be done in third trimester. Collagen vascular disorders where radiotherapy cannot be given. You know this now. Large tumor in small breast that does not respond to induction chemotherapy or where chemotherapy is contraindicated. So let us come now to the chemotherapy. Indications are for all node positive cancers and also all cancers that are larger than one centimeter in size. New adjuvant chemotherapy is useful to assess whether the tumor is sensitive to a particular reason. Also, on satisfactory response, the procedure can be modified, like mastectomy can be converted to breast conservation therapy when there is good response to new, new adjuvant therapy and the lump size has decreased. Examples are CMF, CEF, and CEF. CMF, cyclophosphamide, methotrexate, and fluorouracil. It is given for 6 cycles, each cycle lasts for 28 days. CEF or CEF regimes in this A is adriamycin and E is epirubicin, other things are same. Adverse effect are that is side effects of chemotherapy. Hemorrhagic cystitis is mainly associated with cyclophosphamide. There is neutropenia, there is bone marrow suppression, cardiotoxicity is Especially associated with adriamycin, alopecia is also a side effect. Chemotherapy for distance metastasis. Distant metastasis is stage 4. Amoxifen is preferred therapy if the tumor is ER. Negative chemotherapy may be given. So, if it is receptor positive, tamoxifen should be given. And if it is receptor negative, chemotherapy may be given. Now we come to the chemotherapy. Clear positive, good prognosis. Clear negative, bad prognosis. Measured in femtomoles, that is Mg of cytosols of protein. Clear positive is more than 10. Clear negative is less than 3. Equivocal is 3 to 10. Advantages of hormone therapy are reduces the recurrence rate, reduces the death rate, reduces the risk of tumor in the contralateral breast. So these are the important advantages of hormonal therapy. Amoxifen, it is partial agonist or antagonist. Antagonist to estrogen only in breast, considered as SERM. SERM is selective estrogen receptor modulator. Advantages is as it is estrogen agonist and other reason it decreases osteoporosis and blood cholesterol. Follow up 
of the patient for endometrial carcinoma by uterine respiration and ultrasound dose of tamoxifen is NMGBD for 5 years hormonal therapy for inverse breast cancer this table is from RR Mahendran ER negative only chemotherapy should be given when ER positive and the patient is premenopausal tamoxifen or ovarian elevation can be done but when the patient is postmenopausal aromatase inhibitor should be given aromatase inhibitors for postmenopausal patients examples are reversible non-steroidal anastazole and letrozole irreversible are formistin eximistin non-selective are aminoglutathamide inhibits the conversion of androtenidione to histosin in peripheral tissue anti her 2 antibody therapy is also very important now trastuzumab or herceptin so nowadays we do herceptin receptor testing and if they are positive we get this anti herceptin therapy cancers that over express her 2 new antibody may be benefited in this benefited recurrence disease may be benefited now selective estrogen receptor modulator agonist antagonist with differing spectra of activity examples are or ideal some are reloxifen, adoxifen, or even a. Ideal one block the ER in breast, neutral or inhibitory in endometrium, lack procoagulant activity, X like estrogen in cardiovascular system, CNS skeletal muscle. Let us come to radiotherapy now. Dose is 5000 to 6000 centigrade unit in breast radiation for axilla, it is 200 centigrade per day axilla is when sampling has been done 5 days per week for 5 to 6 weeks. Indications are resectant margin are positive for malignancy. Also all patients of breast cancer preservation surgery should get radiotherapy when there is involvement of pectoralis major and when there is axillary clearance which is not done. Tumors in upper and inner quadrant you should give radiotherapy of internal memory nodes. Precautions are if axillary clearance has been done up to level 3, you may not give radiotherapy to axilla because lymphedema of the arm may occur. Hence in cases of MRM do not give radiotherapy to axilla but may be given to chest wall and supraclavicular area to prevent local recurrence. Adverse effects are lymphedema of arms, cancer and cure lymph and juice sarcoma also called as steward teeth syndrome references used were labelian love r ragmahendran and internet thank you so much